Good morning. My name is Suresh Sridharan. I'm an ISV architect advisor for Microsoft. Today I'm here with uh, Nubifer Inc. and with Chad Collins. Chad, can you quickly introduce yourself and your company? Sure. Uh, thanks for having us today. I'm Chad Collins. I'm the CEO for Nubifer Inc. Uh, at Nubifer.com we focus on cloud-based applications and connecting them to enterprise applications on-prem. Uh, our name in Latin actually means bringing the clouds and we have a history of working with SaaS systems, platforms as a service, and we've really enjoyed uh, working with Windows Azure. Great, so I heard you mention that you've done some work with Windows Azure. Can you explain to me a little bit more about what your product is? I understand it's Nubifer Cloud Link. For the purpose of the audience, given it, tell us what Nubifer Cloud Link is and how it works. Oh, certainly. Yeah, we're really excited about Cloud Link. Uh, Cloud Link does a couple things, and it's a young product that's growing rapidly. Our clients are really enjoying it, especially our financial clients. Uh, I've been webmastering over 15 years, and I've been managing for our clients, and historically, multiple systems. And in the state of the web today, enterprise mashups are simply URIs or URLs that are pulled together to produce what looks like a website, one unified website, when in reality, you've got many different locations and endpoints to track. So nowadays, analytics are typically siloed, and we as a company recognize that when we're deploying things to the cloud, we need to track all of the URIs that handle single sign-on, or dashboards, or website uptime, if you will. So you know, the straightforward answer of what CloudLink is, is it's a monitoring system that can monitor cloud-based applications and, and, and any URI within the enterprise realm. Uh, it brings the analytics to a nice location like Windows Azure so that it can be historically played back, referenced, and, and, and visual, visualized. Great. So I, I heard you mention that you deployed it on Windows Azure. Uh, can you explain a little bit more about what technologies you have leveraged and sort of the high-level architecture behind the product? Absolutely. Uh, we've, we've focused on some of the, the key new features being offered by Azure and we're really excited with, with what we've seen. Um, our engineering team helped put together a, a bulleted list. Uh, we used the Azure Web Role, which uh, provides web service API access uh, to the front end UI. Um, we used the worker roles uh, to provide monitoring and service uptime reports uh, for machine to machine interaction. Um, we used the queue service, and it provides local uh, web to worker role communication for triggering uh, on demand polling uh, requests. We also leveraged SQL Azure, and it provides the data storage for our cloud maps or our cloud schemas, if you will, and also handles authentication and statistical data. Uh, we definitely use .NET class XML serialization. Uh, SOAP-based web services were implemented. Uh, we are planning on moving to WCF soon. Okay. And it, we also uh, use the Entity Framework for relational mapping, and. Uh, linked to entities for querying the SQL databases. Oh, great. So th that's, a, that's a great picture about you know, the technology that you're leveraging and what you're using. Uh, I don't think we'll do enough justice if you don't actually see the application oh. in action. So if, uh, Chad, if you can spend a couple of minutes showing us what the application does sure. and walk us through it, that'll be great. Oh, fantastic. So let me pull this up here. Uh, we've got a few screens to look at. Um, one would be the admin screens where you can add the new URIs uh, for the cloud map, and the other one is actually the visualization. So I'm going to first walk you through the administration panel. And since I've already logged in previous, let me, uh, let me go back to start. And we've got a great URL up on Azure, and uh, let me just go ahead and log in. And here's a very basic dashboard where you can start to enter your parent cloud map, if you will. And here we've created one called the Nubifer Cloud, and our URI is cloud.nubifer.com. That's the root node. And you know, if you want to add new, you can add them right here. But we're going to go ahead and add a subcloud to the to the parent uh, domain, if you will. Here's a lot of the uh, existing endpoints that we're monitoring, and we set thresholds for each one. 
Um, typically that ties into an SLA so that we can keep an eye on that sort of thing. And if you wanted to add a new cloud node, you can select a parent and it can traverse as deep as you like. Uh, or you can set something just right at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add um, downloads. And the URI is going to be downloads.nubifer.com. Now we've used all Nubifer domains, but we could literally track any domains out on the web that, that are public or semi-private. And let's see here, uh, the description will be downloads. And I'll choose maybe nubifer.com, not our blogs. There we go. And you go ahead and add the subcloud. Now we are upgrading our UI so that you can do this right inside of the UI I'm about to show you now. Uh, but let me go ahead and trot over there. This is our API. So let me just trot over to nubifer.com beta 2. And here's the representation that we just showed you where we were entering the rows. Now the neat thing about this is that it gives an aggregate total of the uptime of all of the endpoints and gives you that quick snapshot. Now if something falls below a set threshold, you can watch this like in, like in your network operations center and find out immediately you'll see that one of the machines has high latency. And if you wanted to reorganize your, your layout, you can reconfigure the map by double clicking the endpoints and kind of get new data. Uh, we also have other views. Um, there's a numerous set of visualizations we're going to employ, so probably about 20 more, and including custom ones. Uh, but you can kind of see that you can sort of set these up how you like. Uh, we do have an API that you can call just for the XML. You don't have to use our front end. Or you can even call the, the API and get an SVG output, which is really neat. And of course, we have the standard tree view. And let's say that you wanted to pull this one here to the top and kind of take a look and get a better idea for this. Um, you can play with the data this way as well. And then I wanted to show you a little bit of the actual XML output for the API. Let me just grab that. So what everything we just saw presented there is coming from our, our whistle, and that's pretty much the Great. architecture we have now. Great. So, so you mentioned that you can do a lot of customization based on your APIs. Um, I was just interested in hearing what type of customers are you seeing using this uh, solution? Our financial customers, our enterprise companies that have 7,000 or more employees are very interested in this because they, and, and they're early adopters to our product, uh, and it's going great because, you know, when you're executing a financial trade that's worth millions of dollars and your browser crashes, what does that, what does that advisor do? They call for support and they call for first line and second line and people are digging in logs and trying to find out what happened. Um, our technology tracks the machine to machine interaction, uh, but we are releasing soon, uh, you know, this quarter, uh, client-side tracking as well. So that when, when an end user is using specific pages on an enterprise app, the, it tracks and records their interactions, Great. publishes it back to Azure. Great. For, from your perspective, uh, what are some of the benefits that you have realized with Windows Azure? Oh, uh, numerous. I mean, we've seen the product go from inception to where it is now, and it's really accelerated. Um, but, but one thing that just, you know, you kind of see all of the great components that are coming out in Azure, you know, it, it's fantastic. But what we really, what I noticed was in projects of these size, we completely removed the need to understand infrastructure costs and the theory behind how much data, how many users, what's the bandwidth, what's, how much hardware do we need to buy. And that typically can add a lot of extra meeting time and latency to going live. Great, well. great. Uh, so w w what's in future for Nubifer? Well, um, next year we're going to uh, we're going to continue to develop out our cloud portal offering, and it's going to have some similar uh, underpinnings where it's semi-agnostic. It's a, a portal that will read in data from many different portals, if you will, great. and sort of give you an enterprise mashup look. Um, we also see some great things for CloudLink uh, that kind of go beyond just tracking analytics and playback, and uh, we'll be releasing that on our website soon. Great, great. Uh, in closing, do you have any comments, uh, Chad? Really impressed with what Microsoft is doing. Uh, we're huge fans. Silverlight is amazing. I've been a longtime Flash developer, and more recently in the past couple of years, gotten into Silverlight. It's extremely impressive, and the Azure model is also just fantastic. Great. Thanks, Chad. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thanks for your time. Thank you.